Hello everyone. Today we're continuing our deep dive of Richard Dawkins and Yan Wong's book, The Ancestor's Tale. In this episode, we're going to discuss the weird and wonderful fauna of Madagascar. So let's jump right in. <laughs> As we pull back slightly from the common ancestor of all anthropoids, we are met by a collection of stem anthropoids. Oligopithecidae, including Oligopithecus, Proteopithecidae, including Proteopithecus, Parapithecoidea, including Apidium, which was featured in the BBC show Walking with Beasts, and Eosimiidae, including Eosimius. Where exactly the first three clades fit in the stem anthropoid phylogeny is debated, and Eosimiidae appears to be a paraphyletic assemblage of stem anthropoids, including the family Amphipithecidae. Altiatlasius and Afrotarsius have been argued to place among either basal stem anthropoids or stem tarsiiformes, so they may be representative of the common ancestor of both clades. Most of these primates were predominantly frugivorous. Then, all haplorine primates are united by a common ancestor that lived 60 million years ago in the late Paleocene. The final members of this clade we shall meet are the Tarsiers, infraorder Tarsiiformes, though all extant members are in the family Tarsiidae, small nocturnal primates from the Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. This family contains three genera, Tarsius, Cephalopacus, and Carlito, with a total of 14 accepted species. The most obvious feature of the Tarsier is its enormous eyes that, just like owls, are used for catching as many photons as possible in the dark of night. Unlike many other nocturnal vertebrates and invertebrates, Tarsiers don't have a tapetum lucidum, a reflective layer behind the retina. The tapetum is behind the photoreceptors to reflect photons that are not absorbed by the photoreceptors on the first pass. This helps to maximize the amount of photons absorbed. As one might expect, this has caused the tapetum to evolve numerous times, being found in scallops, dragonflies, spiders, lobsters, lepidopterans, chondrichthians, sturgeons, carp, catfish, coelacanths, crocodilians, nightjars, some marsupials, elephants, cows, many carnivorans, and some rodents, among others. Different animals construct the tapetum from different materials. Guanine, riboflavin, triglycerides, pteridine, cholesterol, zinc, astaxanthin, and collagen. For whatever reason, tarsiers as well as some other nocturnal animals like owlet nightjars and the Galapagos swallow-tailed gull just never evolved a tapetum. Hunting for insects in the night is also aided by the tarsiers' spectacular jumping ability. They can jump 3 meters horizontally and 1.5 meters vertically. As an adaptation for jumping, the tibia and fibula have fused into one bone, the tibiofibula, which has convergently evolved in frogs. As for the characters that unite Tarsiers with all other haplorines, an important one is the defective pseudogene Gulo that we mentioned in The Gibbon's Tale. Recall that this pseudogene formerly coded for the enzyme l gulanolactone oxidase, which assists in vitamin C biosynthesis in many other animals. The fact that Gulo is uniquely broken in Tarsiers and anthropoid primates is strong evidence for their common ancestry. Additionally, there are five short interspersed nuclear elements, or signs, that are unique to all haplorines, but absent in all strepsorines. Strepsorines, however, have eight signs shared among themselves, which are absent in all haplorines. As one paper notes, quote, thus the haplorine strepsorine split may now be regarded as fact and must underlie any phylogenetic reconstruction of fossil primates, close quote. And what of the fossil record of tarsiers? Interestingly, tarsiers haven't changed exceptionally in the last 48 million years which may not be all that surprising given how few species are in their genera. They've settled on a form that fits well and continues so in a relatively stable environment. One paper describes dental fossils of Tarsius eosanus, which lived from 48 to 37 million years ago, as being, quote, virtually identical to the corresponding anatomy in living Tarsiers, close quote. Earlier than that, Archisibus achilles is known from Chinese strata dating to 55.8 to 54.8 million years ago. It differs from modern tarsiers in being diurnal rather than nocturnal and has unfused tibia and fibula. The position of another group of primates, the Omomyiformes, 
has also been extensively debated. These primates lived from 56 to 34 million years ago and have been found in North America, Europe, and Asia. Omomyiformes are typically characterized by their large eyes, shortened face, loss of anterior premolars, having cheek teeth adapted for insectivory and frugivory, and having rather small sizes. Some, like Necrolemur, even convergently fuse their tibia and fibula just like in tarsiers. Their morphology has resulted in their placement as stem tarsiers, stem haplorines, or even stem primates, but more recent analyses tend to regard them as stem haplorines. Perhaps the clade is even paraphyletic. So we come to the common ancestor of all extant primates, which likely lived about 65 million years ago, shortly after the non-avian dinosaurs were bumped off by a meteoric impact. More on that in a later tale. The last crown primate clade we come to is Strepsirrhini, the lemurs, lorises, and bush babies. The name Strepsirrhini refers to the twisted shape of the nose, which looks like a dog's rather than the condition of haplorines. There are seven extant families of Strepsirrhines encompassing 138 species. One feature that unites crown members of this clade is the tooth comb, which convergently evolved in tree shrews, colugos, hyraxes, and some African antelopes. In Strepsirrhines, the tooth comb is formed by the four lower incisors and two canines, whereas in most mammals, only the incisors are involved. Bizarrely, the tooth comb has been modified in the eye-eye to just two continuously growing incisors, similar to rodents. The tooth comb is used for grooming, and Strepsirrhines also have a secondary tongue, or sublingua, that is used to remove hair from the comb. Strepsirrhines are found in Africa, southern Asia, and of course, Madagascar. Lorises are slow-moving strepsirines found in tropical Central Africa as well as Southeast Asia. Galagos or bush babies are nocturnal primates native to Sub-Saharan Africa. And the majority of strepsirines are the lemurs of Madagascar. Now, Madagascar is an island approximately 400 kilometers or 250 miles west of Africa. Madagascar was previously part of Pangaea, specifically the southern portion Gondwana, and Madagascar split from Africa about 160 million years ago in the late Jurassic. Then, between 130 and 90 million years ago, Madagascar split from Antarctica. And finally, Madagascar split from India between 90 to 80 million years ago. Both of these splits occurred in the Cretaceous period. So, how did animals end up on Madagascar? Well, some were likely there while Madagascar was connected to Africa, but how did the lemurs get there? Some biologists argued that land bridges, or island chains, possibly provided a route to Madagascar from Africa. However, the evidence that the Mozambique Channel was ever spanned by a land bridge is certainly lacking. Evolutionary biologist George Gaylord Simpson predicted that instead, much of the endemic fauna arrived through rafting. He made this connection based on a few lines of evidence. The denizens of Madagascar have low metabolic rates and or undergo seasonal hibernation. There are very few families of endemic Madagascan animals. And finally, there are no large-bodied animals, elephants, lions, rhinos, antelopes, etc., on Madagascar. Three species of pygmy hippo appear to have made their way to Madagascar in the Pleistocene, but these have since gone extinct. Remember from the previous entry in this series that ancestral platyrrhine monkeys and caviamorph rodents rafted some 2,574 kilometers, or 1,600 miles, from Africa to South America, which is over six times the distance from Africa to Madagascar. On probability alone, then, it makes sense that we should find more examples of Africa to Madagascar immigration than Africa to South America immigration, and indeed, we do. Lemurs arrived on the island between 60 to 50 million years ago, Tenrex arrived between 42 to 25 million years ago, Carnivorans arrived between 26 to 19 million years ago, and Rodents arrived between 24 to 20 million years ago. Each of these groups is monophyletic, meaning they each radiated from a single founding population. Paleoclimatology adds further support to the rafting hypothesis. While Madagascar was further south, ocean currents could have carried organisms from northeast Mozambique and Tanzania to the northern coast of Madagascar. However, as the island moved slowly northward, it eventually drifted into subtropical and equatorial gyres that reversed currents around it. Now, we turn to the inhabitants of the island. While there is only one family, each representing lorises and bush babies, there are five families of lemurs. They are Chirogaleidae, the mouse lemurs, Dobintoniidae, the Ii, Indriidae, the Indries, Lepilemuridae, the sportive lemurs, 
and Lemuridae, containing all the other lemurs. There are also three extinct families of Strepsorans, Archaeolemuridae, Megalodapidae, and Paleopropithecidae. Archaeolemuridae includes two genera, Hadropithecus and Archaeolemur, which went extinct, likely due to humans, from 444 to 772 CE and 1040 to 1290 CE, respectively. Megalodapidae includes Megalodapus, the koala lemur, which measured 4 to 5 feet in length and went extinct from 1500 to 1600 CE. Third, Paleopropithecidae, including Archaeoindris, is sometimes referred to as the sloth lemurs because of their morphological convergences to sloths, such as their curved phalanges. They may have gone extinct as recently as the 1600s CE. Now, Dobbintonia day is monotypic, housing only the species Dobbintonia madagascariensis. Evidently, there was a giant eye-eye, Dobbintonia robusta, but it appears to have gone extinct within the last millennium. The I.I. gets the tail because it is an unusual primate among unusual primates. The I.I. has a very long middle finger that it typically uses to tap along the trunk of trees, looking for insects. Once it has found some, it gnaws into the wood. However, some researchers have also observed the I.I. inserting its long finger up its nostrils, but its quarry in these cases is unknown. The only other animal known to tap trees while looking for insects is the striped possum from New Guinea which is also convergently similar in color to skunks. In one sense, the I.I. fills the role of a woodpecker, but the I.I. is hardly the only strange Madagascan animal. Madagascar has its own entire endemic family of carnivorans, Eupleridae, which is sister to the more familiar Old World mongooses of the family Herpestidae. Eupleridae includes a couple species of Fusa, the extant one as well as an extinct giant Fusa, eastern and western Phalanuke, the Malagasy civet, and four genera, corresponding to six species, of Madagascar-specific mongooses. Euplerids are known to prey on animals up to their own size and even sometimes larger, and lemur fossils, unsurprisingly, indicate predation by Fusa. The rodents of Madagascar are united in a single subfamily called Nisomayanae, which contains nine genera and 27 species. One prominent member of this clade is the critically endangered Malagasy giant rat, Hypogeomys antimina, that bounces on its hind legs like a jerboa. These rats are monogamous and bear only one to two offspring per year. Evidently, an extinct species of Hypogeomys also lived on Madagascar, but it went extinct around 1500 years ago. Fossils of the enigmatic Plesiorecteropus were first described in 1895, and as the name indicates, it was previously considered to be closely related to African aardvarks. Further morphological analyses called this conclusion into question, as its digging adaptations appear to be convergences rather than synapomorphies. Then in 2015, a team of researchers compared bone collagen from Plesiorecteropus with various other mammals, finding that it is instead most similar to tenrex, not aardvarks. It lived on the island until at least 200 BC. As for Tenrex, the vast majority of their species live on Madagascar. 30 live there, while only 3 live in Africa. Some notable Tenrex are the web-footed Tenrex, which swims, and the lesser hedgehog Tenrex, that looks surprisingly similar to a hedgehog. Madagascar sports and has sported various endemic sauropsids too. One such is the large-horned crocodilian Voe robustus, which, thanks to paleogenomic evidence, is sister to the extant genus Crocodilus. There are some hundred species of Madagascar endemic birds, including the birds of prey, hence the goshawk, and the Madagascar harrier hawk, Mesotornithidae, the Mesites, Brachyteraceidae, the ground rollers, Leptosomidae, the cuckoo rollers, Philippididae, the Ascites, and Vangidae, the Vangas. Vangas are distributed across both Asia and Africa, but all Madagascar Vangas form a single monophyletic clade. Interestingly, they underwent not one, but two separate adaptive radiations on the island, one about 25 million years ago and one 10 million years ago. These radiations have led to Vangas having a greater range of morphological diversity than other well-known island birds, such as the Galapagos tanagers. A few Madagascar birds are thought to have gone extinct since humans arrived on the islands, such as the Malagasy lapwing, Malagasy shell duck, and the elephant bird, who we will meet in a later tale. The lion's share of Earth's chameleons are found on Madagascar, two-thirds of all species. This might cause one to wonder whether chameleons in fact originated on the island, but recent genetic evidence has rendered this unlikely. 
Instead, chameleons appear to have originated in Africa and then dispersed to Madagascar in two separate events. The genus Burkesia arrived in Madagascar around 65 million years ago, Columna and Fursifer arrived about 47 million years ago, and, intriguingly, the genus Archaeus dispersed from Africa to the Seychelles about 34 million years ago. The day geckos, genus Felsuma, also originated in Madagascar, dispersing to Mauritius and other islands thereafter. Five species of tortoise are native to the island, and nearly all of the 290 known species of Madagascar amphibians are endemic. That includes the tomato frog and the golden mantella frog. And as strange as it might sound, Madagascar does have endemic freshwater fish. Cichlids, for instance, originated in Africa and spread across Gondwana, ending up in South America, Madagascar, and India prior to the breakup of these lands. Lastly, Madagascar has endemic non-marine mollusks and arthropods. Some strange-looking native arthropods include the giraffe weevil, with its very long neck, and the blue-green stick insect Acreoptera phallax. So we come to the end of this tale. Madagascar hosts an amazing diversity of fauna, even though humans have caused the extinction of at least some of it. Islands are important labs for evolutionary experiments, and Madagascar has many strange results of this process. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.